classroom educator most of my life. But recently, and somewhat accidentally, I've become a TikTok educator. When I correct psychology misinformation or explain concepts, usually people listen unless they already have a firmly established belief on that topic. And if the topic pertains to LGBTQ plus issues, I get told that I am trying to indoctrinate them. Worse, that I have been indoctrinated myself. Education is not indoctrination, but they're kind of right. I have been indoctrinated as a child. I grew up in the USSR, and until about 14, I did not even know that non-heterosexual relationships were possible. This was the age when my friend Gali and I agreed that we will become roommates after college, just roommates. Still, when my mother heard this, she gave me a lecture about the women from the island of Lesbos, and I ran away and hid in the closet. I did not want to think, let alone talk, about this scary new idea. Even though I was in the literal closet, it turned out I was not a lesbian. But I was an indoctrinated child with narrow, rigid worldview and fear instead of intellectual curiosity. It took immigrating to the US and being exposed to a whole lot of new research and new information to expand and change my mind. Indoctrination results in rigid beliefs and resistance to change. Education is the opposite. Yet, we often hear claims of indoctrination when we educate. Unfortunately, these claims often come from those who don't realize that they themselves have become narrow-minded and they resist the new ideas out of fear or discomfort. There is a common joke between professors that if we actually could indoctrinate our students, we would get them to read the syllabus. <laughs> we can't make them do it, but they can choose to do it. However, choosing to do something challenging or uncomfortable can be very difficult. Most often, just giving people facts and information is not enough to change their minds. Often, we are going to have to start by overcoming cognitive dissonance. Cognitive dissonance is a discomfort that is created by facing two incompatible ideas or cognitions. It makes us want to usually dismiss the one that we are not familiar with. If you were always told, for example, by your parents, that being gay is abnormal and gross, and later you are told, for example, in school, that it's natural and normal, how are you supposed to deal with these incompatible notions? Something's got to give. And it's much easier to reject the new idea and to hold on to your prior belief. We the people don't want our minds changed. This kind of decision making happens because humans are prone to confirmation bias. Confirmation bias is an obstacle to problem solving that results from preference for information that confirms our views and rejection or avoidance of information that contradicts them. New information creates cognitive dissonance and dismissing it reduces it. When I explain to people on social media that gender and sex are not the same thing and that there are a lot of advances in our understanding that neither is binary, some people seek out ways to devalue that information. I get told that the relevant research isn't real or that my doctoral degree isn't real or even that I am not a real woman. 
Yet, I know where they're coming from because I too used to think that way. We the people don't want our minds changed. Being right is a powerful positive reinforcer hitting all the right circuits in our reward pathway. Sometimes we think that we really truly know something and sometimes this knowledge even comes with a bonus moral value. So when it turns out that we are wrong, that is a hard lesson to learn because while being right is a positive reinforcer, being wrong is a punisher. It makes us avoid engaging in activities that would expose us to understanding that we believed something that wasn't correct. Actually learning about sexuality and gender challenges existing worldviews, and so many just avoid trying. Additionally, getting away from uncomfortable thoughts and uncomfortable information is also a reinforcer. We call it negative reinforcer. And that means that people will not engage in things that create cognitive dissonance for them. Rejecting new ideas makes us more comfortable. These are all immediate consequences that are much more powerful than delayed rewards that come from learning and change. Changing minds is very, very hard. Yet, change is the only constant in life. Science changes all the time. It's supposed to. Somehow over time, people accepted that Earth isn't flat and that it isn't the center of the universe. Well, most people did. There are still flat earthers and evolution deniers and climate change doubters. These people refuse to let education change their mind. Sometimes so much so that it becomes a cornerstone of their actual identity. Yet education should be true to how the world actually works. Children developmentally learn a lot by assimilating new information and accommodating their understanding to feed that information. Learning that non-binary people exist while learning that there are boys and girls is easy for children, but challenging for adults who spend their life believing that gender and sex are the same thing and that they are binary. So especially this is difficult for adults who really truly think that some things are indisputable facts of life, always and forever true. They simply won't embrace the discomfort. Yet, rejecting new ideas isn't the only way to resolve cognitive dissonance. We could allow our mind to be changed by that information. Yes, it's going to be downright unpleasant to let this happen and to deal with this. Changing one's mind takes self-control and a courageous commitment. If you want to leave your mental closet, you have to do this. This includes the courage to expose yourself and to expose others to new experiences and interactions that show us how different things actually are. Yet, discussing or debating contrasting ideas is actually a terrible way to spread knowledge. When people engage in debates where they already have very firm ideas about something, what we get is polarization, where each side becomes more and more convinced that they are right. We know this from every online arguments we ever had, don't we? When people engage in these kinds of debates, they just become more and more entrenched. You cannot get a Trekkie to become a Star Wars fan by telling them that Enterprise is inferior to the Millennium Falcon. But you might if they watch Andor. Likewise, you cannot make somebody accepting of LGBTQ plus community by telling them that discrimination is wrong. But they might change 
if they interact and get to know the community members. I did this myself over and over and still do. But I also had to work to understand the current knowledge. But which knowledge can we trust? Knowledge from authority is when somebody, a parent, a teacher, a podcaster, a politician, tells us something and we accept that that is true. We accept that that's true because we accept that this person is an authority on the subject. Yet not all authorities are created equal. Sometimes mother knows best. And sometimes your mother tells you not to sit on the concrete floor because you'll freeze your uterus off. Thanks, mom, but I'll trust doctors on this one because they are the actual authorities on the subject. Authority backed by knowledge and reason. When the authority tells you that something is true because it always has been true, it is time to challenge authority. Nothing new has ever been learned by sticking and regurgitating the same old ideas. For centuries in Europe, Aristotle was considered an authority on a whole lot of things. So much so that when Galileo Galilei made discoveries contradicting Aristotle, he was scorned by colleagues and society alike. Later, he was persecuted by the church because his ideas contradicted then existing beliefs. We know that these authorities did not prevail in the long run. Yet, we also can understand that it was difficult for people at the time to accept and listen to these new different ideas. Such difficulty also exists today when we are learning new information where existing authorities already teach something different. New to us ideas, new to us knowledge, new to us information can all be scary and very challenging to accept. As educators, we want our students to feel nurtured and safe in the classroom. They need to be safe to question, safe to explore, safe to make mistakes. They don't need to be safe from all discomfort, especially the discomfort of new and different ideas. It is also not better or safer to teach two sides of the issue. We cannot teach both sides of the Holocaust. We cannot teach that Earth is either four and a half billion years old or only 5,000. We also cannot teach outdated ideas about sexual orientations that aren't supported by current evidence. We should teach how to seek out evidence and how to evaluate it. We should also teach that knowledge will always change. Noticing when our minds resist new knowledge and questioning why that happens is going to help us to change our minds. There is nearly always a choice and choosing to change can be scary and uncomfortable. We can be ridiculed, we can be rejected, we can be roasted for succumbing to indoctrination or for doing what's popular. Stepping out of your mind's closet takes courage. I think you can be brave enough.